Um, in an odd turn of events, AMD launched a 5500X3D. Now, from a mining perspective, the X3D vCache has not had a significant impact. That being said, it's have it had a very significant impact on gaming. And this is on the AM4 platform. So AMD has already launched, you know, their AM5 platform. It has fundamentally changed the actual socket design, meaning that their AM4 platform uh, CPUs will not go into AM5. And the thing is that's crazy is that we have still more AM4 based processors coming out that are very competitive. For example, like the keeping with the 5700X3D, 5800X3D, these things are very capable from a gaming perspective. And so this was kind of silently launched. Um, now I haven't seen if there's any retailers uh, out with this at this point, but the 5500X3D is gonna be a six core 12 thread processor based on Zen 3 architecture. Equipped with the same 64 megabytes of first generation 3D V cache. This means the total L3 cache on this SKU is 96 megabytes. This is the same specification as the Ryzen 5 5600X3D, which as we remember was sold exclusively through a few retailers worldwide, but never saw a broader release. The 5500X3D is essentially a slower version of that processor, while the TDP remains at 105 watts. The CPU is now 300 to 400 megahertz slower than the 5600X3D, which boosts up to 4 gigahertz. Worth noting that the 5500X3D is not news. The SKU has already appeared in leaks of August last year. However, it took more than 10 months for the part to be released. What we do learn from the official product page is that the 5500X3D will be released exclusively in Latin America. AMD has not listed any other regions. One can only assume this has something to do with the limited availability of these chips. Um, but kind of interesting that they released it. The market makes sense. Um, I think another good market for this CPU in particular would be somewhere like South Korea. Um, it'd be a fantastic, you know, internet cafe processor. Uh, for people that want to game on it, and that's pretty much all they're doing. Um, I think from a mining perspective, you are going to see a significant uh, performance increase or over the 5500, and it's probably irrelevant from a mining perspective in general. Um, if I had to give a, a, say, like a hash rate prediction, on XMR, I'd say between 2,500 and 3,000. What is that hash a second or whatever on uh, XMR? Uh, probably not that great. And the power's not that great either. You would rather have probably a 5,500 at 65 watts. Uh, that power increase is probably coming from the 3D V cache. And there really hasn't been a miner that has capitalized on 3D V cache as of yet. Will there be in the future uh, that comes down to whether or not we'll have a renaissance within the proof of work crypto space? And that's getting harder and harder to see, right? There's no light at the end of the tunnel, I think, for proof of work right now. And because of that, innovation on the mining software side of things, on the algorithm side of things, uh, has been pretty moot, right? Like the biggest thing that we had happen within proof of work, um, probably recently on an algorithm perspective would have been fish hash. Um, unfortunately, while that algorithm was pretty fantastic, um, at least in my humble opinion, from a efficiency side of things, from a, you know, a, an ASIC resistance side of things, pretty great algorithm from what I can tell. Everybody I've talked to thinks it's pretty good. It doesn't run extremely hot like Kapow, still remains ASIC resistant. Um, but that really didn't give a big push for, you know, fish hash or um, iron fish, the cryptocurrency behind it or any other cryptocurrency that's adopted it necessarily. Uh, I think that, you know, part of the problem as a whole 
with proof of work right now too is that the developers are you have two sets of developers right one set of developers uh are effectively you know fork rinse repeat and burning through as many uh different forks as they can you might call them scammers or whatever at this point and i think that does bring up you know the contention of anonymity etc um, and then on the flip side, you have the developers that the ones that want to stick around are trying to implement some sort of, you know, dev fees and uh, pre mines, etc. Um, we're not seeing innovation for the sake of innovation within the space, necessarily It all obviously is financially driven at this point. And I think that puts a big bad taste in miners mouths as well. Um, and, you know, if you're going to do something like that, obviously uh, we can point to Ethereum where, uh, you know, regardless of miners' um, ethical stances on that or preferences, you know, uh, it comes down to if that crypto is going to be profitable and if it has a wider outreach um, beyond, you know, the miners themselves. And, and frankly, that's just not really happening in the space right now. Um, there's some good projects, you know, there's the KY or I guess it's Quai. Um, if you read the website, I don't know at this point how it's pronounced, but, uh, give me a break on that. You have some interesting stuff like Cubic, but Cubic really feels like it's effectively just mining something else in the background and taking advantage of, you know, miners in a weird way there without clear, um tokenomic well they have clear tokenomics i should say clear incentives um because it's hard to tell exactly you know what the incentives are going to be week to week month to month and uh, what those payouts are going to be it's a little difficult as far as that's concerned um trying to think of you have zealous hash which is really interesting um so there are some good projects but until those break out outside of where they are now, which is in the kind of proof of work uh, insider space until it breaks out, until one of those breaks out, I, I don't see uh, GPU mining really getting any sort of innovation um, on the mining software side of things. Uh, you still do have a couple developers, most of them fallen away. Um, you get IDOC here every once in a while with BZ Miner. You get Doctor uh, with SRB Miner, um, and then LOL Miner here and there, but really not a lot of stuff going on, right? And <laughs> Duke says the incentives are getting scammed, and and that has been, you know the the mining strategy from a gpu perspective unfortunately and let's be completely honest about what that strategy has been has been to spec mine all of these forks and dump them on the exchange as soon as they're launched before you have the uh the potential of being scammed by the developer and that's really all it is right especially with like a lot of these like x11 forks uh you know dash forks stuff like that with master nodes it's like if you're going to build a master node you're basically accepting that you're going to get scammed so the best thing is to just sell the crypto to someone else who's going to build the master node and get scammed and hopefully get in early enough to mine it and outside of that you know there's not a lot of good uh gpu mining strategies at this time you know outside of you know building solar reducing power costs the the typical thing right the casper forks too you know the casper forks are the same strategy right john brings up all the casper forks that happened a lot of that was you know mine dump it onto the market peace out and that's kind of like what it is now in a perfect world that strategy should be perfectly fine because the idea is that as a miner you're providing a service your goal should never be to hold anyways you're providing a service for monetary gain and then you have a market demand that is sufficient enough to support that and the thing is the market demand for all of these gpu mineable coins is not there anymore right um and so it typically ends up in a position, at least from what I can tell, where there's a couple insiders that somehow get 
pulled into the community, right? And the community convinces them to not only mine the cryptocurrency, but also buy it. And then the smart ones, the miners that are just mining it, sell it to a couple people that become a part of the community of whatever bullshit token it is. And you're really just stripping out and getting rid of miners that way, which I guess at the end of the day is kind of what I said does have to happen for us to have a renaissance, right? You, the, unfortunately, it's, it's survival of the fittest, right? And you're wiping out all of the people dumb enough to become part of a community. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. If you would like to see more from this particular episode, take a look up here. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support me directly, you can go to sonofatech.locals.com and become a member. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Tuesday.